Hello, this is Teresa Jackson with a Photoshop tutorial to explain what vector graphics are and how they work inside of Photoshop. Photoshop is primarily a raster or bitmap image editor. That is what it was originally designed to do, to work with images that contain pixels. But Photoshop also contains vector tools. You can create, edit, and work with vector content inside of Photoshop. To get the most out of these vector tools, it is important to understand what vector is and how it is different than bitmap. A vector graphic is a mathematical statement that describes a series of points to be connected. Vector does not contain pixels, therefore it doesn't have a fixed resolution. Vector can be infinitely scaled up and down without degradation. Let's take a look at how Vector works inside of Photoshop. Creating text layers in Photoshop is working with Vector. Fonts are Vector. I created this text layer that says Vector. And I want to create a bitmap layer that looks identical. So I'm going to first add a new layer, a pixel layer, by clicking the page icon at the bottom of the layer panel. Then I'm going to hold my Command key down or that would be a control key on a PC, and then click right on the text layer, right where the T was. That loaded the transparency of the vector text into an active selection. I'll hide the text layer for a second. So I have a new layer, an empty layer, a selection of the text, and I'm gonna fill it with the black color doing an option delete on my keyboard. And then I'll do a Command D to deselect. And using my Move tool, I'll shift this down a little bit so that when I turn on the original text vector layer, we can see them stacked on top of each other. I'll move this up so it's even a little bit closer. I'm going to zoom in really close on this so we can examine how similar these they look. They look identical. So even though the text layer, which is this top letter V, is vector, it's being rendered at the resolution of the document that I created. So what we see is rendered to match the resolution. Furthermore, it's rendered according to a setting, a particular setting. I'm going to select the vector uh, text layer and then go to my text tool so that we see the options panel for fonts. This is set to crisp. If I change this, there's several options here. For example, if I change it to none, it's being rendered without any anti-alias, so it has a very, very sharp edge. But as long as I have this on crisp, it essentially matches identically to the pixel layer that I created with the same text. I'm going to select both of these layers holding my shift key down and then I'm going to scale them doing a free transform with the command T or a control T on a PC and then I'll hold my shift key down while I scale to constrain it and I'm going to make these very very small and then click the check to commit that. Now, as soon as I committed that, the pixel layer was re-rendered. So all the extra pixels were thrown away. Let's zoom in and look close and see what, what we see. At this point, they still look very, very similar because the text layer is being rendered to the resolution of what we see. The pixel layer was actually re-rendered by throwing pixels away. The vector or the text layer was only re-rendered for the display on the screen. Let's see what happens when we scale this back up. Again, into a free transform, shift key, I'll drag this out and then click the big check. Now we have a very dramatic difference. The pixels in the, in the bitmap layer were thrown away when it was scaled down and when it was scaled back up Photoshop had to interpolate new pixels that were no longer there. The vector font can scale up and down without any degradation because it doesn't contain pixels. I'll demonstrate this again with a vector shape. 
I've chosen the custom shape tool and the flower shape from the options bar up here. And then I'll just drag out a nice big flower. And that added a new shape layer to my document. Now I'll add a new pixel layer and create an active selection from the shape layer. And then I'll switch to a selection tool so I can shift this selection over. And then I'll change my color to something a little bit brighter orange and fill that selection with the gold color. Now I have a yellow flower pixel layer and an orange flower shape layer. I'll deselect the yellow flower with the command D. Now I'll select both layers by shift clicking on the shape layer, going into a free transform, holding my shift key to scale these down. I'll scale them way down and click the check to commit that. Let's zoom in and see what that looks like. We can't really tell much of a difference here. I'll scale it back up and you'll see a big change. So the yellow flower is very blurry now because when I scaled it down it lost a lot of pixels as soon as I committed that transform. And then when I scaled it back up Photoshop had to make up new pixels to recreate the ones that were lost. But the orange flower is still perfectly sharp because it's created from a vector shape layer not a pixel layer. You can work with Illustrator vector graphics in Photoshop as well. There's a couple different ways to do it. First I'm going to place a logo that I created from Illustrator. And when I place this, we'll commit this, it adds it as a smart object layer. And then I'll transform it, scale it down really small, and commit this scale. If we zoom in and look at it, it just looks like pixels. But all of the vector content is still safe inside of that placed smart object. I'm going to do a Command T to free transform it again and then scale it back up. And we'll see that it's still perfectly crisp and clean graphics. You can accomplish the same exact thing by starting inside of Illustrator and copying your graphics. I'll do a Command A or a Control A to select them all and then a Command C or a Control C to copy them. Then I'll switch to Photoshop and do a Command V or Control V to paste the object. This menu comes up and it's important that you choose Paste as Smart Object. Say OK and click the big check. This is exactly the same thing that I got when I did a place embedded. Illustrator Smart Object Layers are a great way to work with vector graphics inside of Photoshop, but it's important to know that they are only vector as long as you are inside of Photoshop. There is no way to save a print file that retains the vector content. Even Photoshop PDF files convert Illustrator vector to bitmap.